Hey, and welcome to our Tuesday uh, leadership chats. And today I'm really privileged to be able to be talking with Keith Webb, uh, the author of The Coach Model, one of my favorite and the best Christian coaching book globally. Uh, and Keith also runs some training as well that we uh, at Christian Coaching Institute have been really privileged to be able to use as the foundation for what we do as our training. But chatting with Keith today and just going to get a little bit of an insight around why he loves coaching and what he's noticing in coaching. Uh, so Keith, welcome. It is so great. Thank to you. Have Good to be with you. Yeah. I'm I see your videos. You're so famous out there now on the internet. I can't believe it. We're together here. <laughs> uh, so Keith, tell us a little bit about yourself and why coaching? Like what drew you to coaching? Why passionate about it? So I was serving with a Christian organization in Asia in several different countries. And the second country was Indonesia. And I was working with Indonesians and I was a trainer, an outside trainer, helping them with some team development, spiritual formation type of things. And we would, I would meet with them individually in between the sessions, the group sessions. And they would ask my advice about stuff. And I know I'm not supposed to tell them what to do, but I had so many good ideas of what I wanted to tell them about what to do. And it was a bit of a hierarchical uh, society there. So I was older, I had more education and so on than them by quite a bit. So they were like looking up, wanting to do what I thought was good. And, and so, but I was holding back, but they were too good at getting what I thought would be the best thing out of me. And I, and one day though, I, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, Keith, your advice is going to get one of these people killed or rested or beaten or thrown out of the villages they worked in because it's a Christian workers going around Muslim Indonesia. And so the, the, there was a tension there. And I never was, I'd never really faced the consequences of advice giving. Wow. So as a trainer, I train away, but at the same time, I guess I, I kind of expect that people will do you know they'll, they'll take what they like and leave the rest and so on but here it was a little bit more wholesale just go off and do it and and i realized i don't i'm not equipped to help them to discover what it is they're supposed to do mm -hmm. so i'm a good teacher but i didn't know how to draw out so I could put in, but not draw out. Mm -hmm. And I already knew, because I had heard about it, but didn't want to do it. I already heard about coaching. And so I realized, wait a minute, maybe coaching could be a way for me to draw out, not just what that person thinks, but what God put in. Yeah, wow. And so the whole idea of drawing out what the Holy Spirit put into somebody else, using questions and by listening and helping them reflect, to me, that's what coaching is all about. Mm, that's incredibly um, transformational and kind of really shifted you from a kind of a telling paradigm to that asking paradigm. That's huge. Wow. Yes. And so as you now look at your working uh, with leaders all over the globe and who are experiencing leadership challenges in such a different way currently, what are some of the things you're noticing as you're connecting with Christian leaders? What are the what's bubbling up for them, or what are you in? What are your insights for the moment? Well, the 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 right now current one coming out of a year of COVID and and it's not over with, mm. but people want it to be over with, so they want to get back to the good old days the way it was but it's not going back there and it may never go back that way fully. And that's producing a lot of stress in people. It's producing a lot of resentment because they're looking for someone to blame mm. or they're looking for someone to latch on to uh, who's going to be the one that's going to make it all better for them. And this, the, that is, it's, to me, it's just indicative of the stress that people have right now. And, and that stress is causing people to try and get out of the ambiguity of not knowing and instead to make a firm decision when it's not a good time to make a firm decision. Hmm. So, so I'm seeing people make dumb decisions <laughs> or 
have dumb stances on things when because they're doing it just to make a decision because I they want it black or white they don't want the gray anymore and um and so then that's starting to anyway it's creating a lot of problems for people and so I see this root thing of of stress which is producing a response of therefore I want to grab control somehow when there's no control to be found mm. And so we talked earlier around this idea of um, living in curiosity as a coach. Tell me more about what does that what does that mean for you, or well, what insights do you gain there? Yeah, so this is the, the, a lot of leaders, including me. Um, as soon as we hear your situation, we think we know what you should do, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you're like that no. as well. But yeah, yeah, guilty as charged. Yeah, and that's. It's a lot of us, right? And so the, that that's one of the big things about coaching I find that's so tremendously helpful on a mindset and an interpersonal level is to let go of that. See, when I think I know what's best for you, Kylie, then I feel like it's my duty to communicate that mm -hmm. to you. And if you won't do it, it it must mean because you don't understand it well enough. So I have to, I have to push some, you see what I mean? And you push some more. And when our parents do that, it's totally irritating with us, right? <laughs> <laughs> and when our colleagues do that, it's like, yeah, 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 right? And when our bosses do that, we call it micromanaging. Yeah. But yeah, we do this all the time and we think we're being a help. And I think being more open to say, to so for example, when it's how you frame the question. If you say, what's the answer? My, my response is, uh, there is no uh, answer. There's an answer because there's a lot of ways to do almost everything. Mm. In fact, your way with your personality might be different than my way with my personality. Your way with your um, cultural background will be different than my way with my cultural background and so on, right? Therefore, it's going to look different. And, it, and when you start having this kind of mindset, which I think is a curiosity mindset and a cultural, mi uh, I mean, a coaching mindset, yeah. I think it, it starts affecting all kinds of things. Mm. You start getting a lot more curious. You start getting a lot more creative because you start saying, how else could we do this? Yeah. Even though you're perfectly happy with how you're doing it now. Mm. It just uh, opens everything up. But it's also, it's a heart posture and a mind posture to be curious rather than directive in that space. It, it is. Having the vocabulary for it, in other words, being able to form some questions to yeah. ask instead of tell helps. But if you don't have the mindset in the first place, you won't, you won't think to ask. Mm. If you could, um, now I'm going to do the advice thing, but if you could give one piece of gold to Christian leaders in this season, what would you offer them to wrestle with or to think through? Uh, well, certainly around what we just talked about yeah. and to, to just say, everyone doesn't think like you mm. and they're not you. Therefore, they're gonna have they're going to make diff decisions differently based on their values, based on their past, personality, cultural, so on. And they're going to do it differently than you. And so don't judge it. Mm. And, mm. and instead, be curious about it and give them the benefit of the doubt that they're making, a, they're making decisions, they're, they're doing things that they think is going to help them. Yeah. And get curious about that. And you'll find out what's going on, including the fact that they did it incorrectly, right? <laughs> In other words, you can make bad decisions and be a different, but, but the way to approach that is not from a, that's a stupid decision, but instead to, to approach it from a, what, what led you to that decision? Mm -hmm. What were the things you were curious or what were you after? What were you hoping to achieve? What were you hoping to avoid? When you do this from a curiosity posture and a non-judgment posture, they'll come to the realization, oh my gosh, what am I thinking? <laughs> yeah, I don't want to yeah. do that. And then they'll change their mind all on their own. Yeah. Instead of the com confrontative, judgmental, you know, that's a stupid decision. Yeah. Wow. yeah. That's so good. There's so much gold in there, Keith. And I know that we could talk for hours together. 
Um, but we're, we'll, um, we'll pause it there. But I want to encourage everybody, if you are interested in coaching, uh, why don't you grab Keith's book, which is called The Coach Model for Christian Leaders. It is available, Amazon, Book Depository, all of those really good places. Uh, are also on Keith's uh, particular store. So I'll put some links to where you can get access to his book uh, in the comments below. So you can jump in and uh, get that book for yourself. It is a fantastic book. I have a number of copies that have been dog-eared and highlighted because uh, I have used them and, and resourced them many, many times. So Keith, thank you so much for your time today and for investing in um, leaders uh, around the globe. You have invested in thousands of Christian leaders in really, um, you know, spreading coaching, Christian coaching across the globe. And so we just want to honour you and thank you for your investment, your hard work and your diligence. Um, we really appreciate it. So thanks so much for today. And thanks You're for too all kind. Thank you. Good to be with you, Kylie.